Meantime, how low can his poll numbers go? President Biden's approval rating sinking to just 41 percent as inflation takes a big bite out of Americans' bank accounts. Joining us now, Fox News contributor Joe Concha. And Joe, this Washington Post ABC uh, poll also found that 70 percent of people have a negative opinion of the current state of the economy. So that I can imagine uh, that is contributing heavily to the president's personal approval rating. Yeah, Carly, it was another Democratic administration, or at least campaign, that said it, it's the economy, stupid. It, yeah. it's, it's that simple. People feel inflation. They feel this poor economy. And when you dig deeper into that poll, it gets even more brutal for the president. Just 31 percent say Mr. Biden has kept his campaign promises. Support among independents is just 35 percent. 59 percent, we'll talk about this more in a moment, say they're concerned Biden will do too much to increase the size of government. Hmm. 81 percent say parents should have a say in their child's education. You betcha. Look, they, they have a messaging problem. Problem, team Biden. They flooded the zone yesterday in the Sunday shows to argue that spending trillions more in spending in the Build Back Better bill will somehow lower inflation. Nobody above a sixth grade education believes this argument. It's insulting, actually. There is no public clamoring for more, spend, uh, more spending and expanded government. But as usual, the administration, almost all Democrats in Congress, they're plowing towards the cliff anyway. If you thought Joe's numbers were bad, take a look at Kamala's. Yeah. Not much better. I mean, yeah. this is, what are we dealing with? 28% approved, 51% disapproved. I understand what you just said, Joe. And I, I mean, and it doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make sense to you what I mentioned, a sixth grader. But why does the White House, White House seem resigned to keep down this path? The Democrats as a party is keeping down this path, uh, giving the nation something that they don't want. I'm guessing it's the only argument they can make to pass this bill. And I think it, it's a theme that we see over and over again. They think you're stupid. And not you, Todd, but I mean like the American people in general. They think you're not paying attention. And everybody is out there. When Jen Psaki, the, the White House press secretary, says it's actually Republicans that are for defunding the police, that's insulting, again. And you could go down the list in terms of things that they say is happening. And on the ground, it's much different, whether you're talking the border, whether you're talking Afghanistan, whether you're talking supply chain crisis, on and on, they think you're not paying attention attention, but believe me, the American people are looking at those poll numbers, prove it. Yeah, there is this um, tweet from CNN's Brian Seltzer that's getting some attention. Um, he posted this picture of a stocked grocery store, and he said, the supply chain, she exclaims, looking for milk for two-year-old. Look at this amazing overflowing abundance, he, he responds. Uh, I guess that's meant to mock people's concerns over supply chain issues. Why would somebody tweet something like this? Well, that's in step with what the administration's doing, what we just talked about. I, I am willing to bet Liam's Notre Dame College Fund, that's my son, that this CNN media correspondent has never seen a cow in his life. <laughs> because either you, A, think that milk is imported from other countries and comes by yeah, way of cargo ship. China. I get Chinese milk, Joe. I don't know about no. you. <laughs> It's coming from New York State. We, we have big dairy farms in New York State, right? Uh, or B, you're actually trying to sell your Twitter followers that the supply chain crisis is a product of disinformation from right-wing media meant to hurt the president and the administration. But Joe, the answer is likely all of the above, because more. this is an activist. This is not a journalist, guys. But wait, there's more. Here's Stephanie Rule on inflation. Listen. Uh, oh, okay. While nobody likes to pay more, on average, we have the money to do so. Household savings hit a record high over the pandemic. We didn't really have anywhere to go out and spend. And as we said a moment ago, we're expecting retail sales this holiday season to break records. We're about to hand it off to Fox and Friends in about 30 seconds, but why does the liberal media yeah. elite double down on this notion continuously? I, I don't get it. It's as if all those hundreds of cargo ships off the Pacific, Atlantic, and Gulf Coast, that's just an illusion. What you're feeling at the pump, what you're feeling when you pay for food, you can afford it. It's okay. I love it when the richest 1%, like Stephanie Rule, say you can afford it. It's okay, because I can. No, it's not how it works. Yeah, and if everybody can afford things, then maybe we don't need Build Back Better. I mean, that was sort of an that's argument against Build Back Better as well. <laughs> Joe, thank you for joining us this morning, kicking off our Monday in the right way. We love it. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.